16-year-old living in the UK. And what I'm about to share with you happened just about 30 minutes ago. I often listen to scary stories on YouTube. You know, those spine-chilling tales that make you wonder whether they're real or just another work of fiction. But let me assure you, the story I'm about to tell you is as real as it gets. The whole thing started when my curiosity got the best of me. I've always been that kid at a party who observes rather than partakes in risky business. A few months ago, a friend sent a link to what we thought was an innocent Instagram post in our group chat. When I clicked on it, something unusual happened. It asked for some sort of permission. And being the cautious type, I decided to lock my phone and carry on with my day. Fast forward a week, I found myself at my friend's house, and I couldn't shake off the curiosity about that peculiar link. So I asked him about it, and he had this sly grin on his face. Let me show you something, he said. But with a condition, I couldn't tell anyone. Intrigued, I followed him to his room, where he booted up a throwaway laptop, giving me a heads up about the potential legal issues of what he was about to show me. As the computer came to life, he asked me a question that had always piqued my interest. Have you ever been on the dark web? My response was a hesitant no. Coupled with concerns about getting into trouble, he reassured me and opened a browser that I would later learn was Tor. He then explained that the link I had asked about was an IP-grabbing link designed to obtain the IP address of the device that opened it. He pointed out that the number of rows of data roughly matched the number of people in our group chat. Those rows contained the IP addresses of our devices. He then took one of the rows, entered the numbers into a website, and a screen appeared displaying detailed information about the corresponding device. iPhone 8, iOS, network provider, and even whether the screen was on. The chilling part was the location, pinpointing our small hometown. At this point, a mixture of shock and worry overcame me, and I couldn't help but exclaim, What the heck, dude? Why did you want this information? However, my friend quickly hushed me, reminding me of the potential consequences if his mom were to find out. He explained that thanks to encryption, only he could access these IP addresses, emphasizing it was an experiment to test the reliability of this method. Feeling a bit numb from the revelation, my friend decided to lighten the mood by showing me the more entertaining side of the dark web. We explored various websites, selling everything from cars to drugs I hadn't even heard of before. Silk Road, a popular selling website, showcased colossal bricks of cocaine and cartons of weed the size of armchairs. It was all so intriguing and exciting that I couldn't stop thinking about it in my free time. Now fast forward to this week, I got a throwaway device, and, after some conversation with my friend, installed the necessary software to browse the dark web. After a few pages of Silk Road and such, I decided I was done. I closed everything up, disabled VPNs, and tried to forget about it. I made sure not to delve into any dark corners, avoiding red rooms or anything illegal. Or at least, that's what I thought. So there I am, watching PC videos when I receive an email from an unfamiliar address and domain. The email title, a string of seemingly random numbers, caught me off guard. Opening it, I found the subject to be victim information, and it proceeded to list all my banking details my address, and even my mother's surname. Panic set in as I realized the gravity of the situation. This person wasn't just after profit. 
they went out of their way to let me know they had messed with me. In a state of sheer panic, I immediately contacted my bank and reported the case of bank information fraud. Fortunately, I was able to Terimakasi tala memberikan cerita anda. Saya akan melanjutkan untuk memperbaiki dan melanjutkan narasi cerita anda. Ini adalah bagian berikutnya. Connected to a real person. A kind lady who swiftly froze my card and account, ensuring the safety of my funds. The relief washed over me. And as we ended the call, I collapsed onto my bed utterly exhausted. Now, technically, I'm all good. But the question remains, why did this person go the extra mile to find my email, which I never used for the dark web, just to let me know they messed with me? It's not just about profit. It's downright messed up, as if they wanted to play mind games with me. Take it from me, folks. No matter how bored you get, never venture onto the dark web. It's a place where you're never truly safe. Hey there, I'm Jake Miller, just your regular guy working at the local grocery store. Most of the time, it's a bit dull, counting inventory, sitting in the back office. You know the drill. To pass the time, I usually dive into my distance learning courses or watch some YouTube videos. But recently, a buddy introduced me to the dark web, or as some folks call it, the deep web. Now, I'm no computer whiz. I'm just a high schooler with a curiosity for exploring new things. So when I installed the Tor browser and started delving into the deep web, it was pretty exciting. I found all sorts of websites, from standard ones to seriously messed up ones. There was even a site with the last words of death row inmates. Stuff like that stayed in my head for days. I came across meth and drug dealers, arms dealers too, but I wasn't into that. I just loved exploring the creepy side of the deep web. Meanwhile, my job at the grocery store was dragging on and the town was on edge with girls going missing. It wasn't limited to our town. Even the neighboring one felt the fear. No one knew who was behind it, and no bodies were ever found. Cops were clueless, so everyone was on high alert. My routine included dropping my younger sister at school, making sure my folks picked her up, and then heading to work. Last evening, while browsing on the Tor browser, I stumbled upon an Onion website, a murder-on-demand site, yeah, you heard that right. I was about to bail, but curiosity got the better of me. The site's design was creepy, with only three pages. An ominous homepage, an about page, claiming the killer was an artist by profession, and a chilling portfolio page with images of mutilated bodies. Faces were always blurred, and the killer never revealed themselves. It was gut-wrenching, and I felt sick. I couldn't sleep that night, or even eat dinner. I just laid there thinking about the horror those poor ladies faced. The next morning, I couldn't resist revisiting the site. Meanwhile, my boss asked me to manage the cash counters due to understaffing. As I dealt with customers, my mind was racing back to the gruesome images. A customer, an old senior from school, and now a famous painter, brought me back to reality. He shared his latest projects, and I checked him out, waving him goodbye. Back in my office, I continued scrolling through the disturbing images during lunch. Suddenly, I noticed something familiar. Paintings in the background. Paintings that I had seen in the local painter's portfolio just hours ago. I had stumbled onto something big a connection between the murders and a famous painter in our town. Fearful of dealing with a serial killer, I played it safe. I took screenshots, copied them to a pen drive, and left an envelope at the police station with a note saying, Check. 
Perimakasih Tela, Melanjutkan Cerita Anda. Berikut adalah kelanjutan cerita. The Painter's Basement. The next morning, the news broke. Cops raided the painter's house, rescued three girls, and discovered more bodies buried on his property. Justice was served, and the dark web murder site was shut down. No one knew who tipped off the cops, and life slowly returned to normal. But the impact of those events, the darkness lurking beneath our seemingly quiet town, will forever stay with me. Hey, I'm Alex. I've never been big on fancy stuff. For the past five years, I've been flipping burgers at this place nobody really cares about. It's the kind of spot where people just end up. And as long as the food is decent, it works. My life story in 36 years? Well, let's just say I wasn't the academic superstar. I barely scraped through high school, did a bit at junior college, and got the boot for slacking off. My family probably thinks I'm a disappointment, but hey, my only real interest is the internet. A simple job lets me do my thing without sweating it. But recently I messed up. I got tangled up in the dark web, that sketchy side of the internet. Lesson learned, stay away from there. No good comes from it. If you want drugs, find a local dealer. The dark web is a mess and I got caught in it. Years back, my buddy Gail introduced me to the dark web. We were clueless kids, joking about the endless crazy stuff you could find. Gail moved on to a regular job, but the dark web stuck with me. I never got into the dark side of it. I just liked observing. A modern exploration of the weird stuff people are into. Then one night, while poking around, I found this mysterious page, Secrets Onion. It looked like a prank, but something about it got me. I responded to a message, and that's when things got weird. I lost track of time, felt sick, and had to unplug my computer to snap out of it. The next day, things went south. My inbox blew up with emails. It turns out I sent some video to everyone I know panic mode at work. Colleagues, especially Morgan, were talking about Secrets Onion. I got fired by the boss who thought I was pushing some dodgy website. The situation went nuts. Conversations I never had were on record, discussing the dark web. I checked into a motel, but the messages kept coming. I shared my mess on Reddit, hoping for help. This virus thing spread like crazy turning my life into chaos. Now I'm stuck in this generic motel room, scared of what's next. My interest in the dark web turned into a nightmare. I'm terrified, alone, and hoping someone out there can help me sort out this crazy mess. With fear and confusion gripping me, I found myself trapped in an increasingly bizarre situation. My fascination with the dark web had turned into a nightmare. I felt terrified, alone, and I hoped that someone out there could help me unravel this crazy mess.